Thank you for participating in this presentation. My name is Emily Law, and I'm the project manager here from SACO, and you guys are probably familiar with me if you have attended my previous training courses. So um, for today, so for this training, it's going to be a uh, two-day space training on our IP audio solutions. So for today, we will be more focusing on the sales and business uh, portion. And for tomorrow, we will be um, focusing on the technical sections for tomorrow. So we will be leaving all the technical questions uh, for the tomorrow's training. And after this two days training, we um, have a exam for you to take if you would like to receive a certificate. So on the exam, it's going to be a online exam for one hour and it contains 35 uh, multiple choice and one short answer. And the passing line is 80, so you need to get uh, anywhere like 80 or above, 80 or above for passing the test. And after you pass the test, you will receive a electron certificate from us. And uh, we will also print out a official certificate for you um, and we'll be ship, ship it to you along with your next order or your next product. So um, today I also have my uh, colleague Sandra with me. So she will be um, answering your questions if so doing the uh, presentation, if you have any questions please um, send it to the uh, right side, there is like a little chat box. Please send it to the chat box and Sandra can um, answer the question for you. And uh, for any question that she is not able to answer, um, I will um, catch you back after the presentation and I can answer your questions um, after I finish the presentation. All right, so uh, let's get started here. And I have uh, listed the contents um, on this page. So please feel free to let me know if you have any questions and let uh, me or Sandra know if you have any questions or if um, I am speaking too, too fast and you would like me to slow down a little bit, uh, please let me know and I will try to um, slow down the speech. Okay, All right. so let's moving on. So let's have a uh, brief introduction about SECO. So we are SECO. We found in 2010, headquarters located in um, Chengdu, China, in Sichuan province. And also we have uh, branches in the United Kingdom, also in Dubai and in Jakarta. So um, we have our first, very first IPPPX theory under GX, GX theory in 2010. And um, we have our very first IP speaker, actually uh, it was developed in 2015. And after several years of testing and um, improving, we are officially launched our IP audio solutions product line. Um, in late 2019. So in 2019, we have our IP speakers, we have our gateways. And um, in last year, we, are, uh, we launched our intercoms. So we released the intercoms, the IAO3 and the IBO3. And uh, for this year, we just launched our very latest models of our column speaker, the SL50 and and also the BM11 um, for the um, like a accessory that can work with the um, indoor speakers. So um, that is a very quick brief introduction about Echo. So for our IP audio solution, it is a combination of hardware and software components. So for the software section, we have developed the three different software. So we have our IP um, audio center, which is the uh, system, and the audio center is also the whole core of the whole solution. So the audio center 
basically controlling like everything you use within this um, solution, like the speaker that you use and the software that you use. And also we have our dispatch console. So the dispatch console, it is a um, software application. So this software application mainly doing all the um, operations such as like playing background music or doing the uh, paging, um, et cetera. So we will be like um, doing all the operations on the dispatch console. And also we have developed a dispatch app which is a mobile app. From the dispatch app, you are able to check in all the device data and um, also like triggering the uh, pages or like play a pre-recorded message. So that's the, um, the operation that you can be done um, on the dispatch app. So for the hardware, we have our speaker. So we are currently running four different types of speaker. And we have our intercom, the SIP paging gateways, and also our SIP phone. I will be giving more detailed information on both the software and the hardware um, later on the presentation. So let's quickly uh, move into the hardware section here. So um, at the present moment, we are running four different models of speakers, two types for indoor speaker and two types of um, outdoor speaker. So on our SC15 network steering speaker, it is the indoor speaker. It is designed for indoor purpose. So 15 means it supports 15 watts. So for most of the speaker that we can see on the market, they support at most 12 12.9 watts of speaker. I haven't seen any of the, the um, indoor ceiling speaker that supports 15 watts. And obviously, um, this ceiling speaker it contains one woofer unit and one tooth unit, which the woofer unit um, handling all the low frequency range and the tooth unit handling all the high frequency range, making the sound like the sound unit to be like more um, crowded. And um, the SC15 is quite heavy. It weighs 3.45 kilograms, which is like 7.6 pounds on, for one ceiling speaker. So that speaker is like, like very heavy, I mean. And also on the, um, the side of the SB15 ceiling speaker on the back of the design, we actually left a uh, Phoenix connector in the back of the um, speaker, which you are able to make the extension out of this speaker, such as so uh, we left one drive contact unit and one sensor um, Phoenix connector. So you can connect a um, emergency light behind, like. You can connect a emergency light with this speaker, or you may um, connect a sensor or our BM11, the uh, press to talk button, along with this um, SV15 to achieve the talkback speaker feature. So that is our um, SV15. So for our SW15, it also supports 15 watts. So this S W15 is also a indoor speaker designed for indoor purpose. The SW15, um, the design of the SW15 is similar to the SC15. It contains one full unit and one total unit, and they weigh pretty much the same. So um, the SW15 is like 3.3 kilograms. And also on the back of the um, SW15, we also left the Phoenix connector that you can make an extension to connect a emergency light or like a sensor or even a button out of this SW15. And for our home speaker, the SH30 
level coin speaker. So on the previous two indoor speakers, they are PoE supported. So when I say PoE, I mean both PoE and PoE plus. So um, the horn speaker and the two type, the two models of um, indoor speaker, they are PoE supported. So you can use one PoE cable to fix same things like for both the Ethernet and the power supply by using one PoE cable. So for our horn speaker, it actually uses a two inch mid range drive unit, which making these like directing the sound into one direction and making um, making the sound coverage to be uh, larger. So the optimal um, coverage range on the SH30 is uh, 70 meters. So also, since the SH30, it is decided for outdoor purpose, it has the IP65 enclosure, which means the speaker is uh, waterproof and dutch proof that you can use it for um, any uh, outdoor in any outdoor environment. And the SL50 network current speaker is the um, newest mo models of speaker that we have. So we actually just um, released this SL50 by the beginning of this month. So the SL50 requiring 50 watts, which um, it is not PoE supported. So you do need to make a um, external power supply around with the um, the SL50. And also our SL50 is uh, 4G SIM um, SIM SIM card supported. You can use a 4G card um, inside the SL50. So the SL50 column speaker is quite heavy. It weighs 4.5 kilograms, which like approximately 10 pounds for a um, column speaker. So this guy, the SL50, is not PoE supported, so you do need to um, plug in the ex like the external power supply with the column speaker. And also we have our BM11. So B stands for button and M stands for um, microphone. So this little guy, the BM11, it has one microphone and one push to talk button in it. So this the BM11 only works with the SV15, SW15, the two models of indoor speaker, and also our X10. That's the patient gateways only, so it can work only with these three um, models of devices. So on the um, using the BM11 along with the um, indoor speaker, it can achieve the talkback uh, feature, so you can connect the um, the BM11 along with the speaker, and then after you push the button on the BM11, you can start talking with the um, speaker. And for intercom, so for intercom, we are having two different models. We have our IVO3 and also our IAO3. So we stand for video and A stand for audio. So for our IVO3. So as you can, um, you guys can see from the appearances that the uh, major difference between these two models is the IVO3 got this little HD camera on it, while the IAO3 does not. The IAO3 is decided for audio purpose, so that's why we um, have like two different models, right? And um, However, both of the uh, models, they are third-party IP camera supported. So as long as your IP camera support RTSP. So um, RTSP is a standard video stream protocol that you use for um, IP cameras. So as long as your camera is RTSP supported, you can integrate the intercom with the camera. So here is a more specification on the intercoms. So as we can see from the middle diagrams, 
there is a little blue box. So this little box is actually a FNAF connector. So a similar design of our indoor speaker, this intercom. So to both models of intercom, we left a FNAF connector inside the intercom. And uh, this FNAF connector can connect with um, can connect with one one sensor and one drive contact you um, drive um, contact relay. So you may extend a um, sensor or a like turn like a switch like on and off um, emergency light. I think emergency light out of this intercom. And um, here is the specification for the IAO3. So both of the um, intercom, they support the party's IP cameras as long as the camera is RTSP supported. So both models, they support our cameras. And also if you are using our dispatch console, which is our um, um, software application, so it can pull out at most 16. Um, camera image into the um, into the console. So since we are only decided sixteen um, like sixteen panels for the uh, camera panel, so it can only go at most sixteen at the moment. But you may connect as many IP cameras to the intercom as you would like. So um, for example, you can connect. 20 IP cameras with one intercom, but if you are using our um, panels, our console, it will be only pulling out the first 16 um, IP cameras real-time image and showing on our um, software application. And um, also, um, one thing I forgot to mention is for our IVO3, the HD camera can be booked as an individual camera which means it has its own um, RTSP address that if you are using a CCTV system, your CCTV system can be pulling out this camera's um, real-time image using the RTSP um, address to so pulling out the, um, the, the video stream. But for our systems, we do not store any of the um, the video files into our system. So for what our system do is actually we taking the real time image from the cameras and showing on our panels, but we do not store any of the video files into our system. We leave the um, saving file job to the CCTV system. And uh, for one of the projects that we've done in China is for a uh, job. They do. They use our IAO3, and for each of the IAO3, they extend a emergency light out of the um, the intercom. So whenever you push the button on the intercom, the emergency light would be go up as well. And for the uh, moving on to the next product is our six pageant gateway. So for our gateways, we also have two different models. We have our X10 and X30. So the uh, major difference between these two models is their working temperature. So for the X30 is actually what we call the industrial type of product, which it can work in a like under a um, tougher environment or like a um, higher and lower temperature. Besides the uh, working temperatures, there are still a few differences on the um, front of the um, gateway. So uh, let's take a look from the right to left. So from the um, right, we have the audio. So the audio on the X10, it actually used the 3.5 mm jack, and on the X30, we are decided to use the uh, finesse connector, so you need to use the pin on the X30 if you would like 
to use the audio section. And on the green section, um, which labeled it a speaker. So each gateway can support two passive speaker and um, each uh, passive speaker can can be um, 10 watts or lower. So it can support two passive speaker. And the next yellow circle, the yellow circle is the um, bottom with light. So if you have purchased like our um, the bottom from Deco, we like our bottom. It has this like um, blue light outside of the bottom. So on each of our gateways, we support two bottoms with light. So the bottom section would be go into the key sections, and the light would be go into the LED light, LED section. So it can support two bottoms. And the blue circles, BIN, that is the sensor section. So you can connect with uh, one sensor at the gateway. And the red section is actually the uh, dry contact unit. So the dry contact unit is actually a um, switch that you may consider like as a turn on and off switch. And um, let's take a look on the X30. So the white section, the um, on the X30, which the X10 does not have, that is the power supply. So you can actually do the power supply through the Phoenix connector on the front on our X30. And also for the uh, purple section, that is the um, external um, signals um, supply like power supplies. We left a 3.3 um, volt of Phoenix pins on our F30, but the F10 does not have the 3.3 um, power supplies on it. So uh, besides the uh, so besides the um, Phoenix connector difference, they are pretty much the same, and also working temperature, so they are pretty much the same on uh, functionalities. So here is uh, what you can actually connect with the um, X10. So on the audio in section, you can connect with a um, microphone. Or um, also on our X10, we support a feature called external music correction, which is a um, a feature that you need to use a 3.5 mm jack. So one end is going to connect with the um, X10, and the other end is going to connect with your phone or your laptop or any music sources that you have. And you can play the music from your phone to the gateway and push it to the um, the system. And you can have the um, the music going through your speakers. So um, that is also a option, or if you have purchased this, like, this guy, this is a uh, Bluetooth adapter. So you can actually use this uh, Bluetooth adapter plugging with the, um, the X10 and using your phone to connect these Bluetooth um, connectors and also playing the music through the speakers so that way you do not need to upload all the music files to the systems and playing um, songs, playing like background music. You can use your phone or your computer for playing the background music. And on the audio out section, it um, commonly used to connect with a amplifier. So that is a um, cost saving solution for if you already have a full set of analog paging system and you would like to change from analog to a IP based paging system. Um, one way that you can do is to use a X10, the zip paging gateway for translating the signals. So that way you do not need to purchase, like repurchase the, all the speakers. And you can still use the same set of um, amplifiers and the speakers. So all you need is you need one gateway per amplifier. 
then uh, for the um, speaker is support two passes because so we have we have two um, speakers um, the left and right um, supported and also the bottom is light you can connect up to two and most two uh, bottom that is um, contain light or not and also for um, for the um, sensor, you can connect with a smoke detector or like a um, another type of sensor. And for the dry contact uh, relay, you may connect with a emergency light or a, a door um, like a uh, door magnet lock to turn on and off the door. And also, if you are using our system, it can also uh, be integrate with the third party's IP cameras. So if you would like a more cost saving solutions as a intercom, for what you can do with the um the gateway is you need to make a um you need a bottom and you need a speaker. That's I guess that is all you need. So um you need a speaker and you need a bottom and then this guy can be integrate, integrate with the third party camera. So you have the full set of intercom features. We have a lot of customers doing that as well. So that is a brief um, introduction on the um, gateway. And here is the more um, detail on the specification. And on our X30, it's actually like 100 grams heavier than the X10, but the X10 is um, cheaper, like more um, cost saving, like budget limited. So for our C phones, you guys probably familiar with the our C phones. So also two models, the H81 and the H83. So for the H81, um, it supports two live SIP accounts. While the H83 is the part for life, and besides the different, like besides the two and four lines of super cam, the H83 also using this um, LCD color screen, while the H81 is using the backlight screen. All right, let's moving on to the software section. So as I mentioned earlier, that we have um, developed three different software applications. We have our IP audio center, we have our dispatch console, and also our app, the dispatch app. So we are actually separating the configuration and the operation out. So for the IP audio center, it will be mainly handling all the configurations, such as um device registrations, the dispatch user account um registrations and all the um configurations you will be um done on the IP audio center. And for the dispatch console it will be handling all the operations such as I need my speaker to play a background music. I need to make a paging or I need to make an announcement. So that would be the job for the dispatch console. So since we are separating the the configurations and the operations, so we will have two different user roles mainly. So for the first one, of course, we got our demonstration. So the demonstration would be the person who is going to mainly use the um the center, the IP audio center for making all the configurations. And also we have our operator. So the operator is also called the dispatch user. But uh, personally, I prefer to call it the operator. So the operator would be the person who's going to use the dispatch console and also the dispatch app for operations. So before we move on to um, the software, so let's take a quick look on the system um, architecture, the platform that we use. So for our system, we actually built it 
based on Docker. So Docker is what we call the container technology. So which means we are separating our systems into different containers. So um, I believe we are currently having nine different containers. So we have one container that is containing all the um, like containing the whole database, and we have another container that is containing the uh, memory database, and uh, another container that is containing the video system, etc. So comparing to the traditional way of how we build a software application, if for the traditional uh, way, we might start with like only a few functions or few features and we have a small piece of coding get the application running and then we will be adding more uh, features more functionality and the whole application goes bigger while the application goes bigger it contains more feature more functionality and more coding it means it has a higher risk on the uh, system so if one of the um, Piece, like one of the pieces of coding crash or it has bugs, the whole thing can be crash, can be down. But since we are using the Docker, we are separating different systems into different containers. So even worst case scenario, we have the whole container crash. It won't implicate the other container. The other container will be just one. So Docker, the container technology, making our system more safer and more stable to use. So for moving on our moving on to our IP audio center. So it is a system that you can deploy on a cloud-based server or um, hardware server, and also visual machine using the ISO file. So the um, IP Audio Center, it is the whole car controlling all the devices and also the uh, the dispatch user and the dispatch uh, app, dispatch console. So from the IP Audio Center, you will be registering all the um, all the devices here and also creating the dispatch user account from the center as well and um, creating the patient groups. So from our system, we support unlimited numbers of patient groups. So you can create as many as you you would like. So you may like putting all the speakers on the first floor into one group, and all the intercoms on the also on the first floor into another group. And um, you can create like many groups for your first floor, and another many groups for your second floor. We support unlimited number. And also on the dispatch user, we also support a limited number of dispatch users. So you can create one dispatch user A for handling group A and dispatch user B going to um, handling um, group B. And also if you have like um, deployed the system on a cloud-based server and you have multiple um, locations, in um, in reality, you can use only one set of systems and controlling like different um, locations for changing or like for changing background music or making announcements, etc. But um, for our IP Audio Center, you do need a license to activate and use the IP Audio Center. So I believe you can start with a um, either a ten devices or a 30 devices basic license package. And on top of this 10, 30 um, devices license, you can get an additional 10 or additional additional 100 devices on the license. And here is the, um, the interface look on the FIP account. So moving on to our IP Audio Dispatch Console, it is a software application that you can download and install it on your computer. So on the Dispatch Console, we support Windows, Mac OS, and also Linux. So pretty much all the um, 
common use operation system. So on the dispatch console, let's take a look on from the top to the bottom. So on the top, we have the um, device type icon. So if you click on the speaker, it will be listing out all the speakers that you have um, you have in this dispatch user's um, authority control uh, zones. And if you click on the intercom, it will be showing all the intercom. And um, it from the middle panel, it will um, listing out all the devices that you have on this um, from this dispatch user. And um, on each device, we have a little icon on the uh, left corner. So different color representing different static. So if you have a um, green icon, that means the device is available. It's not doing anything that you can that you um, can use it for like music or for paging. If the um, the icon is in red color, that means the device is busy, is working on some operation. And if the icon is in in yellow, that means uh, there must be something wrong with the device. So it is in error. It can it could be the problem with not enough uh, power supply to to get support the um, device. Or if the icon is in gray color, that means the um, that means the device is offline. And from the left navigation bar, we have the console and we have the music. So the music would be basically the music library that you can upload all your music files and also creating the music playlist that you can um, play for like background music or um, uploading your own emergency uh, alarm in your own language into the music libraries. For the meeting, so you are able to invite um, different devices to a meeting. And for tasks, so tasks, tasks, we are currently supporting three different types of tasks. We have the immediate, we have the timetable, which is the repetitive, repetitive, repetitive tasks. And also we have the um, dial numbers. So for the dial number task, you, it is a preset task. And for each task, you are going to give it a specific number, such as one, two, three. And you can use your SIP phone or your any like your, uh, your master phone to trigger the task. And for the alarm, the alarm would be showing all the alarm history record. And on the uh, bottom navigation bar, on the left bottom navigation bar, that is the uh, telephony feature. As you guys know that um, Jekyll has been embedded in PBX for more than 10 years, and we are master in um, PBX. That is also why we also implement the telephony feature into this paging system. So if you get this paging system, you are actually having two um, two systems, one telephony feature and um, one paging system. So for the telephony feature, it, we support the common use like split monitor, whisper, bucket, intercom, um, telephony features here. And from the right navigate, bottom navigation bar, that is basically for the audio or music features. So if you click on the play, that you can choose a, a music playlist for playing background music. And um, you can choose the devices for pagings or for alarm, for meetings, and also uh, adjusting the volume. And the stop like stopping the music. And on the right side is a video intercom panel. So um, if you have registered, if you have using our IBO3 or you have registered another IP cameras into this system, you are able to view all the cameras image from this video intercom. So it, this little panel can be expanded 
into a um, four, four by four. So a total of 16 video intercom um, uh, image box panels here. And moving on to our dispatch app. So for our app, we also support the, um, the iPhone and Android system. So the uh, features on the dispatch app comparing to the dispatch console is less, but it is still uh, more, it is still convenient for you to use if you are not in front of your desktop and the full set of feature is not capable at the moment. You can still using your phone to trigger the trigger the paging or um, play like playing uh, background music, changing the music playlist, or even like play a pre-recorded message. And also, you can view all the device products from the uh, this patch up as well. And I will be showing you a few um, features here. So for reference, that you guys can get a sense of understanding what exactly this system can do. And we will be getting more into the um, technical section for tomorrow. So here is a um, portion list on the features, such as we got the paging, we got we support multicast, we support P2P. So multicast and P2P are the two features that you can use without a server. Um, if your device is under the same network, then you can use multicast and P2P uh, without the server. And we have the top left speaker, we have the dial number tasks, etc. So for paging groups, so as I mentioned earlier, that we support unlimited number of paging groups. So it has more flexibilities and capabilities um, for you to use. And for background music, for tasks, we have three different tasks. We have the immediate, we have the dial numbers, and we have the um, repetitive timetable tasks here. So for the timetable, you may um, repeat a task only from Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. You need to make a after school announcement that way that you can use the timetable task. Or if you need like to make an emergency uh, patient or emergency announcement, that way you can use the emergency task. And for paging, so choosing the devices and click on the paging that way that you can use your master phone to make the paging. And also for emergency alarm. So for the emergency alarm, it defaultly, we defaultly giving you a few um, emergency alarm audio files along with the system, but you're still able to like importing your own um, alarm files into the system. For the pre-recorded message, so you can um, pre-record the message and um, try it out and then uh, put it as a task or a um, or a paging using the pre-recorded message. For the, um, we also support TTS. So TTS is also available, text, text to speech. So you can like converting the text into audio using the TTS and also volume control. We have our intercom call. So if you have pushed the bottom on the intercom, it can be, it can be um, directly calling to a pre um, set destination number, or it can also trigger a task. So if you have set your task as uh, playing a, um, a alert announcement, that you, you can also do it for pushing the bottom and trigger the task or uh, push the bottom to call a preset destination number, like calling um, my desktop phone or um, my colleague's desktop phone.
and for the video intercoms. So the video intercoms, both models support um, IP cameras, support the RTSP IP camera. So if like whenever you push the bottom on the uh, intercom, it can pull out the real time image from the connected um, IP cameras and showing on our panels on our console. And uh, the com the com monitor is the telephony feature. So I can choose a device and monitoring the um, the whole conversation. And we have the uh, whisper um, spice core. And also we have the bucket. And also the split. So split will be like split splitting the conversation. And also we have meeting that you can choose the devices, invite the device to a meeting and pulling them out into the meeting room. And for recording, so for on our system, we are automatically record all the uh, phone calls and the intercom calls, also the meeting and the paging um, recording. So all four type of recording, they are automatically uh, recorded. If you would like to turn off the recording, you need to set it up on the um, IP audio center to turn off the recording setting. They will even um, automatically record your um, your call or your paging. And for the centralized management, so we are able to monitoring all the devices from one platform, such as our dispatch console or our dispatch app for monitoring the device data and control the um, devices from our desktop. And also we have our multi-use parish. So on the uh, multi-user use, user parish, we have the um, from the lowest one to the, uh, from the highest one to the lowest job. No, from uh, the lowest one to the highest job, yes. So the uh, the dispatch user who has a higher privilege level can be override or terminate the operation that is done by the dispatch user who has a lower privilege level. And on service priority, we got like we need to um, have some sort of service priority here. So such as we have the background music as the lowest service priority. So um, for example, I have my speaker that is playing music and um, I need to make a alarm. So the background music will be stopped and the background music will be go back on after my alarm is, uh, is finished. So uh, we have set the uh, service priority here. And also for API, so we have the full set of API if you would like to make an integration with another like a third party system, you can use the um, API. And for IP telephony, so you can also um, register a PBX, like IP PBX or using a SIP trunk to connect with a um, telephony system for making like an inbound or outbound call using our system. We also support it for the um, SIP trunk or um, you can like register a gateway or like a IPCBX onto our system. And also for um, hot standby. So hot standby is basically um, running the system on two, two servers simultaneously. So um, if the primary server is crashed down, it will be automatically switched to the uh, backup server, the secondary server. So the average test that we um, we got from the, um, the switch is around like 30, uh, around 20 to 30 seconds to switching to the uh, backup server, but it will be depends on the server 
like on your hardware compatibility. So if you have a um, hardware server that has like a um, higher capacity, it can be quicker or it can be um, slower. But the average retest is somewhere around like 20 to 30 seconds for switching to the backup server. And um, let's take a look on the, uh, the advantage here. So what advantage we have comparing to the analog public address system? So obviously, um, using the IP-based paging system, we can achieve more features, more functionality, right? We can um, we can do the uh, timetable tasks, like the scheduled tasks. Um, we are able to making the uh, paging at home that way we don't need like for the analog paging system it usually like um, installed in a control room and for if you need to make a paging you need to go all the way to the uh, control rooms and for making the pagings or you need to switch to the next song you need to go into the control rooms but if you are using an IP base that you can use your phone to switch to a next song or you can like um you can use your computer these software applications for making the um the pagings or switching to a next song. And also using a IP based paging system is more flexible on the paging zone. We support unlimited number of paging zones. You can like even put one speaker as one paging zone. That is totally fine. But um, if you're using an analog paging system, it is expensive and tough to expand the paging zone. And one paging zone is requiring you to have the um, the amplifiers and the analog speaker, etc. For our devices, besides the column speaker, they are all PoE um, supported. So one PoE cable is going to um, meet all, all your needs. While if you are using the analog, you need like a whole bunch of cables and you need the amplifiers, the central amplifiers, et cetera. So those are the major difference you using the um, IP base or the analog. And comparing our um, system to another IP based public address system, so I would say the um, the advantage that we have is we use the SIP protocol, the standard SIP protocol, so SIP, then for section initial protocol. So um, SIP is belong to IP, so it is one of the protocol that belongs to IP, and this protocol is um, is a standard public protocol which means our system is able to make the integration with the third party system and the third party endpoint. So you do not need to put, like using everything from us. You can just like using our systems and using a third party endpoint that is completely fine as long as your endpoints they are SIP enabled it or you may use our endpoints and reg make the registration to the another um, third party system as long as they are SIP enabled it. That way we can do the integration. So comparing to most of the products on the market, they are using what we call the private protocol. So if you're using the private protocol, that means you need to get everything from the same brand, the same company, because they are using the private protocols. So if you're using the speaker, you're using the system, you need to use the intercom, you need to use their, their product from them. But for us, we are SIP enabled it, that we support third parties integration and um, third parties endpoint. For industrial type, so I would say, Pretty much anywhere that you can think of, I believe our solutions can be applied to. 
So such as um, transportation, we have done a lot of projects for airports and for subway stations and also the train stations, um, both in China and overseas. For healthcare, like such as um, hospital or clinic sessions. Education, we have done a few projects for the schools. And also retail would be like uh, shopping malls, grocery stores, and manufacturing, also city surveillance projects. We just finished a um, a park, a wetland park project in Chengdu here. And um, I will be showing you the case study on the next slide. So I would say pretty much any weird that you can think of, I believe our project, like I, our solution can apply to. Okay, let's uh, share a few cases study here. So I have chosen five different cases study for today. So for the first case study is the um, the Kevron shopping mall project that we done in Taiwan. So you guys are probably uh, familiar with uh, the Kevron. So the Kevron is a famous uh, French brand that mainly for sports for sports appearances. And um, for what their domain is, they have a brand new shopping mall built in Taiwan, and they need a paging system. And they came to our distributor for the um, for using our solution. So for what they actually use in their project is they use our system, the IP audio center, and also they install um, 50, I couldn't remember, like 55 or like somewhere around like 55 to 65 of our cabinet speaker, the SW15, and install it um, in their um, shopping mall. So their shopping mall is actually a 3-4, a whole building with 3 four, and they install like 60 each of the SW15 cabinet speaker around their shopping mall. And also they um, they have like a very large office, and they also installed two of our home speaker in the office for making announcements. And also they use the X10 for um, for the music correction feature. So that is the uh, first project. For the second project um, case study I chose is the zoo project that we done in Australia. So for this project, they I believe they use our horn speaker and the intercom because they do need they, they need to build a um a emergency um call point or like information call point using our intercoms and also the horn speaker for making announcements like closing time announcements. So in their solution. They, um, so for this project, they actually integrate with the with our IPPBS and using the um, to connect the IP audio center with the IPPBS using the zip trunk. That way, that they can use the uh, PBS to trigger the task using their um, desktop phone. And um, in their project, they use a number like 20 each of our uh, intercoms and also um, a number of horn speakers. Like I, if my memory serves me correct, I believe they use it for like 25 of the horn speaker as well using our PBS. So in this, in this solution, they use our PBS, they use the um, the IP audio center and also the um, intercoms and horn speaker. For the next um, case study I chose is the uh, post selection center that we done in New Zealand. So in the case, they already have the analog speakers um, installed in their post selection center. 
and they would like to upgrading the analog to um, IP base for making like for achieving the scheduled um, passes like scheduled announcement feature. So that way we um, they use our system, the IP audio center, and also they use a number of our zip paging database because they have a very large area in their selection center. So, um, and they have a number of um, amplifiers, one amplifier with one Arctic patient gateway. And for the next case, um, study I chose is the Redland Park project that we just uh, finished in Chengdu here. It actually happened in Chengdu. So in their case, they need to build the uh, emergency call point or emergency health point. So from uh, what they use it in their project is they use our video intercom and go and for and also the third party um, cameras and for and also our IP audio centers. So. In their case, for each of the um, intercoms, it connects with the surrounding um, IP cameras. So whenever um, the visitor or like um, anyone needs help, they push the button, it will be automatically pulling out the surrounding IP cameras real-time image and showing on the console. That way we can um, see the situation in real time. So in their case, they use the intercoms and um, connect with the third party um, cameras and also using our system. And the last case study I chose is the uh, MICE project that we've done in Korea. So in this case, they did not use our system, instead they are uh, using our PBS and also the horn speaker because for all their domain is they only need to make the emergency announcements or um, live announcements, live paging. So they don't need the background music feature. They do not need the scheduled like announcements feature. So they didn't use our system. In fact, they registering all the um, the horn speakers into the uh, IPPBS, and from the IPPBS, there is a uh, paging and intercom uh, feature, which means that you can like um, dispatching the horn speaker into different groups and making the group announcements using the PBS. So um, in the in this case study, in this project, they use our PBS and also the horn speaker. I believe that if all my uh, presentation slides is. So let's take a look if we have any questions here. 